Hello, welcome to another episode of Whiteboard Learning. This one, um, by popular request, I guess, is about how to differentiate sinus tachycardia versus supraventricular tachycardia. Um, now, this is a problem in human medicine as well. It's not just for us. Um, people in ambulances are being, uh, the professionals are being asked to differentiate that as well. They have a few more tricks up their sleeve, um, but let's see if we can get you some hints on how to do this. First of all, these are what we call narrow complex tachycardias, both of them. Um, if you have a wide complex, you know that you don't have probably a supraventricular tachycardia. You may have a ventricular tachycardia. So that makes sense, right? If it, if it looks wide and bizarre, um, that would not be coming from the same place as a supraventricular tachycardia. It would be a little bit easier to figure out. And um, if you also have a wide complex, you might have a bundle branch block. And that which is what can be a little bit hard about SVT sometimes. But what are we talking about? So we're talking about um, arrhythmias that come from the above the AV node. So above here. So anywhere between the sinoatrial node and the AV node um, and bundle of His. These arrhythmias originate from up here. So sinus tachycardia originates from the sinus node. So sinus tachycardia is going to occur for the usual things we think about. So there might be a drug like chocolate uh, or caffeine, or uh, if they get into illicit drugs, it could also be from shock, um, hypovolemia, dehydration. And sinus tachycardia, this is a little bit easier in people, but sinus tachycardia has a rate max, and it is the fastest that your heart can generally beat without there being something wrong. In humans, what they'll do is they'll subtract your age from 220 to get your max rate. And so anything higher than that is an SVT. Um, so sinus tachycardia for a cat, the highest heart rate they might be able to achieve is about 250, maybe without, um, but you know, they sometimes do higher, like 300 if they're hyperthyroid. So that might be another reason, uh, another kind of chemical manipulation to cause a sinus tachycardia. But in a big dog, anything above 220, uh, you would think would be um, sort of a, an arrhythmia. But that's what's hard um, about, about that. So the first thing in differentiating these two is to see, are any of these diseases present? So history, physical, fast scan, looking for uh, a reason for this patient to have a sinus tachycardia. But those usually aren't the ones that we're having trouble with, right? Those are the ones that we're, we're feeling okay. Pain, make sure there's no pain, things like that. So the, the second thing is that this will have rate, sinus tach will have rate variability. And uh, SVT will not. So this will either be exactly the same all the time, no rate variability, um, or it will be paroxysmal. So it will come in and out very abruptly. So you'll have a normal P wave, QRST, and then you might go into uh, the sinus tachycardia. I'm doing a bad job drawing that. So this will be paroxysmal or all the time, um, but sinus tachycardias will have some variability. And that'll have variability for when they breathe or things like that. So the important first thing here, keynote, is to get a good EKG strip that's long. And so at our hospital, the important thing is to go get cardiology's machine and read it, uh, the instructions on how to do it, so you can get a long enough EKG so that you can see if there's any rate variability. You'll also make sure that you don't accidentally try to find an irregular rhythm, right? Because if I'm saying this is the same all the time, this is a regular rhythm. This is never going to be irregular, right? And we just want to make sure we don't accidentally do AFib. Uh, and the one that can a lot of times look a little bit weird is AFib with a bundle branch block. Uh, that can look like VTAC. It can look like... Uh, SVT can be very hard. So you want a long strip so that you can make sure that you can differentiate any variability in the rate, even if it's little, while there's breathing or coughing or anything like that. So 
paroxysmal, automatically, uh, and SVT, um, rate variability, automatically not SVT, automatically sinus. So uh, then you might um, have heard of things, uh, vagal maneuvers. So in human medicine, they will do a vagal maneuver like have you cough uh, is one. They put cold packs on your face um, and uh, that's for infants, pediatrics. Um, they'll also have you bear down. That's the Valsalva maneuver um, where you'll actually, it's very protocolized. You'll breathe into a syringe uh, for the Valsalva maneuver for 15, 20 seconds. And that will reduce the rate um, in an SVT, either not at all, no rate reduction, or abruptly. Now, the Valsalva maneuver, uh, well, the maneuver that we use for vagal um, stimulation is a carotid maneuver. And what it does basically is if you, um, here's the point of the jaw and the neck and here's the carotid artery. If you go right under the point of the jaw, right on the pulse on the carotid, you are inducing bradycardia uh, from the aortic and carotid bodies and um, they will uh, lower the heart rate and that will generally be gradual if it is a sinus tack. Um, it will be abrupt to a sinus rhythm or um, no, no change at all um, if it is uh, going to work. And that's the hard part is you're not always sure that it's gonna work. Um, you should only do one side, not both, and you should hold it for about 10 seconds. Um, but if you abruptly lose your, um, your uh, rate, then you're probably looking at an SVT. And if it's gradual, um, then it is um, a, vague, uh, a sinus tachycardia. So I hope that helps. Main hints, get a good, real, a good EKG. Make sure you're not being fooled by something that's irregular. Look for rate variability at all during your long strip. And look for an underlying disease. Um, if you have any paroxysmal uh, changes to the rhythm, if it goes in and out, then it is definitely an SVT. It will never change rate. Um, and try a maneuver. Uh, to see if that will either gradually change the rate or abruptly or not change the rate. I hope that helps.